Hey, Kevin. What? Is, oh, you know. <laughs> what happens when you get to the end of August. We're all just tired. Hello. Uh, I am setting up the new Everlast Power MTS 251SI for tank welding. I was going to work on some railroad spikes here, so I was making this big cactus flower looking thing, and I just needed to weld some spikes together, so I thought, Eh, let's give it something heavy to chew on. So yeah, let me show you how I got the panel set up. So you can see it's on high frequency start. And it's set to standard TIG. So no pulse. We've got 150 amps. And I've got it set to 4T MIG TIG. So I'm just using the trigger rather than the foot pedal. We got a second worth of upslope. We've got one amp to start. And then we've got a second worth of downslope and 4.6 amps. We'll make that four to stop. Push the button. That puts it all in the preset and you're ready to go. So let's go. <laughs> And now, a question from the audience, standing here watching, why am I using TIG for this? Well, several reasons, really. I've got this new machine I want to check out, so I want to run some higher amps with it, see how it does, see how the cooling is on the machine, see if I you know, hit the duty cycle or something like that too quickly. I like TIG just because it's clean, it's basically smoke free, you know, it's much quieter. You know, if you look on the bench right in here, you can see the leftovers from where I was MIG welding with this machine. It's, it's a multi-process machine, but I did all the MIG welding on the bottom of this piece. So lots of little spatter, lots of little balls, you know, little debris lying around. Well, you just don't get that with TIG. You get a nice clean weld, nice clean joint, you know, nothing to go back and clean up because this is all going to be sticking up above this piece. So it's all going to be visible. So I want nice clean looking welds on there. That's why I'm gonna use the TIG for this portion. I would use the MIG for the, you know, the structural unseen portion, the part on the bottom that gets buried in the dirt. So that's why I use TIG. So let me put my gloves on and we'll go ahead and put a tack in here and then lay this over and run a couple beads and see how she does. So that looks pretty good right in there, but the gas hadn't quite purged all the way out of the gun, you know, through, the, through the gun at the very start. So let me run another little bead over here on this side. Let's see what we get, out, get over there. Finally get something like a puddle going. Probably bump up this amperage a little bit. And stop. Yeah, nice looking, nice looking bead, no holes, no porosity. Just the way it's supposed to turn out. Lessons learned. Make sure you get all the rust off. The machine seems capable. Now, I'll probably bump that amperage up to, you know, from 150, I'll probably bump it up to about 165, you know, and do a little bit more, see how the penetration is there. But machines seem plenty capable of doing it. So, speaking of doing it, I think I will. I'm going to go back to work over here. You guys are going to come out to Facebook, check out Kevin Carone Artist, and see what's going on out there on my Facebook page, and have yourself a great day.
Okay, so the first thing we get is a melted tungsten, a mess I gotta clean up on the railroad spike over here, and the TIG lead and the ground in the wrong connectors on the machine. So that's your blooper for the day. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs>